Most interior designers think that they typically need to take on bigger projects in order to make more money in their business. But the reality is, is that you need to understand the process of a typical project in order to actually understand where you can make the money on a project or make the profit on a project. And in order to do that, you need to really understand one key simple thing, and that is the design process. So the design process or the construction industry process for a project starts with um, concept and then ends with completion. So uh, if you don't know these, they vary slightly from area to area, but always, they will always run in a se sequential order because one thing needs to be done before another starts. So what are these phases? So the first phase of a project, and this is typically anywhere in the world, is feasibility, where you set the brief, where you understand what the budget might be, where you even just really think about what is required. So this is a really, really basic step, but uh, well, it can be quite complicated on uh, different types of projects, but this is really, it needs to come at the earliest phase of a project because obviously you wouldn't be doing this at the end of a project. So this is something that needs to happen right at the beginning. So this is the first step of any project. The next phase of a project is typically the concept or design phase. And this is really just the big idea and that's all it is. Um, just understanding what the vision is and where really the end of the brief is going to be taking you. So this is not uh, where you start choosing furniture, for example, typically. It's just the idea of a project. The permissions phase. So this might uh, come later or, or a little bit earlier, depending on where uh, you are in the world, what kind of project it is. However, usually if it is a big construction project, there will be some kind of permissions required, development applications, maybe historic building applications, even uh, party wall applications, things that really need to be understood um, and agreed on prior to any kind of further investment in the project takes place. My favourite phase, the detailed design phase. And this is where I think a lot of designers get mixed up because this is not concept. This is the detailed design phase. And this is where you take that concept and you now start to add the detail into it. And this is where you figure out how big things are, how big um, the furniture is, the exact sizes of things, um, the exact numbers of things. So this is where you work out the detail, not at the concept phase. And I think this is a really uh, important thing to recognize and understand. The next phase is technical design. This may be uh, included in detail design, but typically it comes a little bit after because uh, once you work out the details and spend the time on working out the details, then the technical design phase can start because then you work out uh, really the, the bits and pieces and start to get other professionals on board. So you, it's kind of the phase that happens after detail design because this is where you're really outsourcing for um, joinery designers, uh, carpentry, um, maybe electrical, lighting designers and all of those professionals that start to uh, really feed into that technical design process. The next phase is bidding or tender and this is where we price the project. So it's a real very separate phase where you have a separate set of drawings that are for pricing and this can be sometimes um, the the kind of uh, the technical drawings or the detailed design drawings now presented ready for construction but it is a separate phase where this is being priced by a builder and this is a really important phase because this is typically where a lot of value engineering happens and there are changes to a project, maybe through a development process in terms of um, how things are going to get built because you've designed things to look a certain way, but maybe the builder has a better way of building it. And that uh, is something that you can agree at this phase of the project. The next phase is the construction phase. And this kind of runs parallel with the interior designers uh, phase in the way that this is where you would typically uh, start placing orders for longer lead items. So your FF&E really starts to kind of happen at this time, but obviously you don't install it at this time because the building might be a building site or uh, the building hasn't even been built yet. So uh, the construction phase is a, 
a very standalone phase and obviously you wouldn't start construction without having the concept and all the planning permissions in place to, um, to start it. So you can see how this is now starting to become uh, the next phase of a project where things actually hit the ground and uh, construction starts. The next phase is the installation phase for interiors. And this could be uh, where your well, all the finishes are in and this is where you're starting to install the furniture. You may not be physically installing the furniture yourself. So some interior design firms do that, some others don't. Uh, like myself, the builder would be installing and I just do the design or project manage. So um, the installation phase how you run it and understanding how you run this phase of the project is really kind of critical. So this phase really is just knowing that it's the part where the furniture gets installed. One of the last phases of a project is when you're styling, adding the finishing touches and this is where you are on site and doing those little bits and pieces. Um, you typically have a team, it's, uh, it's, it's you know, it's physical work because you're walking around and making sure that everything's in place. Um, but this is really where maybe the photography happens. So it's really the end of a project, but um, you're getting ready for that final stage. So you're kind of adding all of those finishing touches and um, it might be a phase of a project that you actually don't do. So this is uh, just kind of those finishing touches. It's styling, it's it's making, you know, dotting the, uh, the I's and crossing the T's. And the final stage is photography and post-occupancy, which is really just seeing what the client is happy with, whether there, there needs to be any changes um, or just understanding the work that you've done and trying to um, see where you can make uh, the life of the client better um, and moving forward, especially in the architectural field, uh, what is working with the building or your design and what isn't working with your design. And of course, uh, the final, uh, final parts of a project are photo photographing it. So um, this is really where if it, once it is complete, completed, um, you finally get to see the finished result. So as you can see, there's a certain process that the construction industry follows when undertaking a project. And I think this can be really confusing for interior designers because most of the time you haven't been taught this process or you understand this process or you have been taught it and you don't know how to use it or make it profitable in your business because you just think that you have to do everything where in fact you don't have to do everything. And this is really the beauty of creating an interior design business that is personalized to you and uh, that works for you. So for example, um, you can create an interior design business where you don't have to do project management, which is typically the type of business that I do. I started my interior design business by only working on concept and e-design. The way uh, that a lot of my students still to this day work uh, or start their interior design businesses by focusing only on the concept phase because it, it means that their uh, legal liability is a lot less because it's just the design phase. They're not getting into, um, you know, insight, uh, on-site installation, ordering furniture and sourcing and um, project managing, things that uh, they really don't have the experience to do at that point. Um, but I think where a lot of people get confused is they clump everything together and think that this is what an interior designer does and you're not a real interior designer unless you do all of these things, which really isn't true. So you, as you can see, the reason why a lot of interior designers don't have a profitable business is because they will confuse the phases of a project. They will do detail design in the concept phase or they will uh, start or they'll include everything into the concept phase, uh, including sourcing, <laughs> and just lump it all into one. And this really is where uh, you just make the biggest, biggest uh, mistakes uh, uh, as an interior designer in your business. And this is seriously why you cannot make a profit out of your business because um, you're 
you, well, you're shortening all of the phases firstly, but then not actually allowing all of the natural things to happen that a project requires at all different phases of a project. Are these natural start and stop points that all of the construction industry follows, uh, including, uh, you know, carpenters, electricians, plumbers, everybody knows about it. So why don't interior designers? <laughs> so I think it's really important to understand these clear start and end phases of a project and just get just understanding what is required of you at different phases and then understand what parts you want to take on and what parts you don't want to take on and then obviously you have to make that clear to your clients and I can understand where a lot of people or a lot of designers will say well my client won't paint for design they will I worked for the one of the biggest interior design companies in the world that only do concept <laughs> so it if they can do it um, you can do it too. It's not rocket science. It really is just understanding the phases of a project, understanding what concept is, understanding what concept isn't, and then obviously agreeing that with your client. So if you do want to have a profitable interior design business, this is really the key uh, to moving forward. Um, and of course, that is what I do as an interior designer and mentor at our interior design business school. Thank you for watching this video. My name is Jo Kroback. I'm an architectural and interior designer, and I also am the director of the Interior Designers Business School, where we help career changers start their careers in interior design, uh, typically later in life. And um, we do that by helping you learn the ropes, but also start an interior design business working for yourself. Um, so we don't do things the traditional way. We really help you by teaching you the hands-on applicable uh, kind of practical stuff that you need to learn as an interior designer where most people learn um, by working uh, in the field or working for other interior designers. So we kind of teach you and help you to become an interior designer working for yourself by helping you work on real life projects working for yourself. So if you'd like to find out more, just uh, go to www.idps.online.